Today, we're going to talk about using banking concepts when you purchase vehicles or make other purchases and how to work that to your advantage. I hope you enjoy. So you may have heard the term become your own bank or bank on yourself. And it's a very popular strategy and it can be very effective. It's not always completely understood, so that's going to be the attempt today to see if we can get some clarity to help people understand what's going on and how they can work this to their advantage. And this goes along with that opportunity cost video that we distributed last week. I'm going to, again, be using the Truth Concepts Calculator. There's a software that anybody can, can purchase online, and it does a great job running numbers to show you the whole picture. Today, we're going to use the borrowing strategy calculator. And in this scenario, we're going to take an individual and we'll look over a 30-year period. And we're going to say this individual starts at zero, but they have determined that they are going to be a strong saver. And they're going to save $10,000 a year. And to start with, ah, let me get that out of the way. To start with, they're going to be putting that in a shoebox. So for simplicity, where we can kind of see what's going on, we're going to say they're putting 30000 a year into a shoebox, which means at the end of 30 years, because there's no interest, they're going to have $300,000. And you can see that right there. Okay? Now, they don't look at these as being working together, but they also are needing to purchase a vehicle. So they're going to periodically be purchasing vehicles over that 30-year period. They've got a fairly new one. So the first one they won't need for four years. They're going to do this five times over that period. And they're going to take four years to pay it back. Now, they're just going out to the bank and they're getting a loan. So the market loan rate, we'll say, is 8%. So on the one hand, they're saving $10,000 a year. And on the other hand, they're spending and buying vehicles and, of course, paying interest to a bank. Well, if you look at this and you talk to somebody that maybe you might say there are some financial entertainers on the radio that would say, look, this doesn't make any sense because you're not paying the bank anything, or I'm sorry, you're paying the bank interest and you're not earning anything. So what they would tell you is you should just take that out of your cash. In this case, paying anything back. And then what you end up with at the end of 30 years If we're dealing with the entertainer's idea is, well, now you end up with 150000 of cash. So while you didn't pay interest to the bank, that was a positive, you end up with half of what you would have had as far as savings goes. If we start thinking about banking and the banking concept, if you're going to be the honest banker, you have to pay yourself. So whatever interest you would have been paying to that bank, you should be paying that to yourself. So if we come back over here and we say, okay, then we're going to pay ourselves 8%. Well, now we're sitting at 331000 So we're moving in the right direction. But in reality, would we have money sitting in a shoebox earning nothing? So assuming that we could get, let's say, 2% on a uh, the bank account where the money is sitting, but we also have to count factor taxes now that we're earning something. So if we were in a 25% tax bracket, now we're moving in the right direction. So self, we'll call this self-banking, gets us to $413,000. So we're moving in the right direction. This is a, a positive because in the other scenario, we were still driving vehicles. We were saving money. We were ending up with $300,000. In this case, we drive the same number of vehicles. We're saving and spending the same amount, 
but we end up with 413,000. But that's not the whole story. Because if we can then capture some of the dollars that we would otherwise be using for uh, protection and that kind of thing, now we can potentially magnify this even more. So in this example, if the individual, instead of taking the $10,000 and putting it in a bank, if they instead chose to design a properly structured life insurance contract, they could put $10,000 in because they needed protection. They have a family and we're going to use a 35 year old with a contract that's paid up at age 66, uh, $10,000. So same contributions. So when I plug that in, that data in, and now we don't have to deal with taxes because this account is not going to have ongoing tax drag. Well, now all of a sudden, as we look at this, now you look at what the ending value is. Now we're really starting to make some traction here. So now when we maximize, we end up with $701,000 because we've improved our tax efficiency. We've had the same amount of cash flow moving in and out of our household. We're putting the same amount in savings. We're spending money buying vehicles. But when we work these pieces together, we went from a situation where we had $300,000 at the end of 30 years and we bought our vehicles but did not look at them together. Now, if we combine these pieces together, we're at almost three quarters of a million dollars with the same amount of flow. This is what the bank on yourself concept is advocating, and this is what it's trying to create for individuals that implement it. If you have questions about this or anything else related to cash flow, money, things like that, how to maximize these dollars for your benefit, don't hesitate to give me a call here at Westside Advisors and Insurance Services. I hope you have a great week.